and we should start soon. Hello everyone. Um, welcome back to the live stream. I have not done uh, the live streaming for a bit. Um, I, I paused my live streaming for a bit because, uh, well, um, yeah, uh, scheduling reasons actually. But I'm back. Um, and today I just want to, well, relax and I want to code something fun that I enjoy. Um, you know, programming can be fun and I do enjoy thinking and playing around with ideas and notions of computation. Uh, so I like things like Lambda calculus. I like things like Turing machines and speaking of computation. Well, there is also another form of computation called cellular automata and, um, John Conway's Game of Life is actually um, the representative. Okay, testing. Okay, my audio went away. The Ubuntu is a bit weird, but John Conway's Game of Life is basically the um an an, an example of uh the most famous example of cellular automata, and that is what I want to do today. And today I want to write a cellular automata in Go. Um, people have asked me, am I only a programmer in Go? No, I I enjoy programming in multiple languages, but. I really just enjoy writing Go, Go code. That's 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 the thing. That's that's why I write Go quite a bit. But I do have code in many many different languages. Um, maybe someday I'll actually code in some other languages. But um, for something relaxing, um, Go is good because at the same time I can think of being a machine. Um, this is what we call mechanical sympathy, I guess. Um, and yet you don't have a lot of extra layers like C++ or Rust where you've got all these meta layers uh, doing memory memory checks and stuff like that. Um, I want something simple, something easy. So yeah, that's that's essentially it. That's what I'm looking for. So, um, sorry. And now let me swap my screens around. I've not done this for a while, so... Uh, it's a bit rusty. Uh, let me turn on my Emacs. Excellent, excellent. Okay. And there you go. We have Emacs. So I've created um, a package main and um, in here you can see um, the license and everything. Uh, you can find the repository in the, um, oh, I can see myself. You can see this uh, github.com slash qxy slash ll. That's the repository that I'll be working off. And I've basically done nothing except write a simple package main over here. Um, all right, so let's get started with coding. So um, it will be mostly silent unless I'm trying to explain some things. All right. So yeah, what do we need in a what do we need in a game of life? So from thin air, we can create a board, a world. Yeah, that's a better name. Um, yep. Yeah. And in this world, it's a two-dimensional two-dimensional world. So we're going to represent the world with a tensor. So I'm using the uh, gorgonia.org slash tensor package because I wrote the package and it is a multi-dimensional, uh, it's a package to handle multi-dimensional arrays. So let me show you what it does, for example. Um, so I can say tensor.new, I, I want to create a new dense array, uh, a tensor, a new dense n-dimensional array uh, that is basically say, three by three, right? Um, and then I say, I want the backing array to be, 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven, eight, nine. That's nine numbers. Now, uh, if I print this, Oh, I've already also create. Oh, right, yeah. I've also created um. I've also created the uh, the go. Oh, hang on.
Okay, I think you've got audio again. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's see. Um, I want one, three, five, seven, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's that's um that's one byte, and it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we will run the world later, but right now we can print the world, which is good enough for me. Uh, no shape or dims dims oh yes of course this has to be the ims ah of course what do the eglot organizer ah of course hmm yeah yeah i know I'm not that great at coding, who knew? Okay, I'm just going to ignore the error for now. Too many arguments to convert to shape. Uh, right, of course, that's the wrong one. Yep. Anyways, so here you have it. Um, essentially a, a world that is all dead. Now you also want to pass in an initial state of the world. Um, I'll figure out how to pass in the initial state of the world. Um, I guess I can do a set. Okay. Uh, so in order to do a set, I'm going to create a new type called coordinates. No errors. Okay. And um, now I'm going to show some naughty little tricks that we we have with the tensor package. Um, access. We'll call this an access to, of the world, uh, which is a type of bool for now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, yep. Native dot matrix B, this is This is pretty cool. Um, if you've not seen, if you if you're not familiar with Gorgonia and um, so let me show you what na what what um, let's just print the world, okay? So we'll print the world it, the tensor first, and um, and then we'll print a. So w dot w w dot a. I'm just going to put a new line here. Missing function body of what? Oh yes. Uh yeah. So so what you can see here is this this um okay let's just switch to three by three. So it's easier to see what's happening. So this matrix is essentially represented as a slice of slice. If I update this, for example, this would update as well. Or vice versa. For example, I can show you w dot a um one one, right? So one one equals to true. Now 
So this is true, and this is true as well. And note that I, I'm actually setting, setting the value after it's been created. So what I'm trying to say is that W and A are linked. They are essentially different ways to look at the same, same set of memory. Okay? Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't want it to be a bull. I want it to be... Type is called DOA, dead or alive. Type is bull. Um, and then var DOA T. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, oops, what I'm going to do here. Is I'm going to change this to um, DOA, and you, you will see why for good reason. Right. Um. The the main reason is I want to do um formatting of my own. So this is from, uh, if bool, if bool b, and so we'll print, um, if, if it's alive, we print x, otherwise we'll print no. Capital X is good. Ah, yes. Of course, forgot about this. And yes, I forgot I have to actually wrap this in that. Ah, that is a bit missed. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So, uh, instead of matrix B, I'll need to matrix and So, basically that. B. So, I can now print um, f by, by formats of whatever that is required. So there you go. If you've, if you've seen me do like the, the whole, uh, alpha go in go thing. Well, this is exactly what I did. Um, the go board is essentially a big ass ten, big tensor. Um, and you run functions on it. It's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, one second, someone's asking about the live stream, so hang on for a bit. Okay, um, we're back. We've changed quite a bit of things. Um, so, uh, nope, C dot X. Yep. X, Y, C dot X, C dot Y, um, C dot X equals to value. Okay, um, and it needs a value clearly. Yeah, we should rename this. Um, CV, coordinates and value, the pair of coordinates and value. Right. 
So now, for example, we have all false. We can do w dot set, um, and then I'll have one one, and I want it to be true. So so now, the middle cell in here, this one, when I run this program, the middle cell would be true. Let's see if my programming skills is up to par. Aha! What am I missing? Oh yeah, forgot to type. Method of X has Y. Oh right, yeah. Okay, it's um, I didn't export it. You know what? I'm just gonna export all of this. X Y. There you go. So now the middle bit is you can set as many CVs as you want. Um, so one one would be that, and then two is also true. So it goes like that. So now we have a basic of a basics of um, doing the creating a world. Now we have to implement parsing the rules. We have to implement a run function of the world, right? Um, where, where am I? Yes. So world has a set function world has a run function or maybe we should call it step you know because what cellular automata do is they step one step at a time they move one step at a time um yeah so oh crap obs um sorry obs is a bit acting a bit weird so um so let's call this step and it should print an error. I'm not sure why yet, but I have a strong feeling that we need that. Huh. Okay, so what is going to do, um, what's going to do is, let's see, it's going to go for the next state. It, it's going to calculate the next uh, state. Okay, we will need a buffer. Yep, yeah, so we will need a buffer. So when it steps, it first copies. Um, is there a thing? Let's set a copy no. Anyway, you don't need to do that. Is that a copy? Uh, let me go check out GoDoc because I, even though I wrote the package, I don't really remember like all the functions that I wrote. Um, I'm I'm very sure Gorgonia itself has copy, but I'm not sure if Tensor has copy. Copy to copy. Yeah, I do have copy. Okay, good. So what I, in the first step, I need to copy the world into the buffer um, so that it has, um, it has a backup of the world, essentially, the state of the world, and then do my computation and then write those changes into the new world. Right. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the buffer as, as the computation layer. Right, so you copy the world, and 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 then you use that as the comp computation layer while you, while it modifies W. So tensor. Dot copy. W dot W W dot B. No, the other way around. W dot B W dot W. So it copies from. Um, B to uh, W to B. Okay. Um, if uh, not nil, and then we can do the processing here. 
So what it does, what it needs to do in the processing is it needs to go um, cell by cell. I can do that cell by cell and then check if its surrounding is alive or dead. Now there are two few ways to do this. I can use tensor.slice. If I use tensor.slice, I can do something fun with it. Oh, hang on. I know what I can do. Yeah, okay. I don't need a bool. I can just sum it. Because the rules state that it's how many cells that are alive. So I can just sum it. So I just need to replace this with an integer. Or I got, an, I got a pretty good idea what I want to do. So I'm just going to replace it with floats. Yeah, I know floats are weird. Um, but it also gives you... Um, it also gives you the ability to uh, mess around with things like being half half alive and half dead, for example, which is weird, right? So you know what? Let's not do this. Let's just do straight up matrix F sixty four. I mean, when when the library provides you functions, use the functions. So the native library uh, like translates these things into you know native stuff um oh yeah we also need to create b here actually i think the buffer might have to be one must 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 be padded one bigger am i right I will think about that. Uh, for now, we're just going to copy and do. Um, yeah, for, for now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make it the same size. I have a feeling that um, that the buffer needs to be one padded. Hmm. Yeah, the buffer needs to be one padded. Anyway, let's let's work here. Work work through this first, okay? Um, before before doing anything crazy. Um. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to create th this is, this is a glider, I believe. So one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. Uh, let's see if this runs. Fifty-one. Sorry, that's wrong. That's, that should be buff. Like ah uh, right. Yeah, this whole that should be float sixty four. Now I can do something fun, which is I can use a slice and then Yeah, I can slice. Okay. So I'm right. Let's see if this works if I am correct. Missing return, da da da. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, this is BS. We're just going to change this to 1. Okay, it works. Right. Um, so the buffer would be one bigger than the actual thing itself. Um, so I cannot actually copy. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, I can copy. But that's going to cause a lot of extra allocations, which is not, some, not something I really want. Okay, I'm just going to call this a view, which is um, a view which is the same size as So I can slice, um, ugh, this is one of the biggest regrets I have in making the tensor library. I'll, I'll, I'll explain why, why that is later. So I'll just call this one, one, and then, uh, so sorry, one and to the end would be S two zero minus one. And this one would be S2, 1, minus 1. Okay, this is a bit weird. Um, let me explain. Okay, so S is a function. Let's just write a new file. which is, um, what's a slice, type slice. Yeah, yep, start. So this is, this is, this is, there, there is a, there is something called a slice. So let me, let me explain this to you. So this, hmm, eglot. Anyway, so this is a type. Why is this not working? Yeah. Uh, disabled by mod read on. Okay, forget it. Anyway, so this type is an interface. Um, and with this, you can slice anything in, in a tensor. So. be s0 s0 plus 1 and 1 this would be the step okay now let's not do this
Um, so this is one of the things that I really do not like about the Tensor Library, but it's been there for more than five years and, and, and it really, it does help in some situations. Uh, but in other situations, I, I, I do wish that I had written a generic, uh, a generalized uh, slice type, uh, provide, a, a, you know, this, this concrete implementation in the Tensor Library. Speaking of which, that will be coming in the next version of the Tensor Library. So, hey. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. Um, default panic. All right, so right now I'm slicing. Um, let me explain this to you in, um, in a bit. So in a, in a, in a, in a matrix, let's say we have, uh, This is a four by four. Okay, so we we want to pad this four by four. Actually, let's let's make it three by three so it's easier to clean watch. So this is the original matrix. Um, a three by three matrix is the original matrix. Now we want to pad one on each side, right? So, um, now it, it goes from a three by three matrix to a one, two, three, four, five by five matrix. So this is what padding does. Um, right. So this is the original matrix. And this is the padded version. So the buff this buff over here is the whole padded matrix and we want a view which is this one we want a view which is a, so that we can copy uh, data directly into here and then the padding remains the padding and this allows us to do some extend this world to something crazy for now this world is a plane i mean it topologically it is a plane we can make the world a, a, a cylinder so you basically take this two ends this end and this end you glue them together and it becomes a cylinder um on which your world is right um and then you can take this cylinder and you can make it into a torus uh which is the pac-man world the pac-man world is a torus right so you that this allows for all sorts of um Craziness, I guess extensions, right? Right now it's just a plane. I can extend it into 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 one of these other topological functions. I can also make it a um, I can also make it a sphere. Um and the rules the, the rules will play out very differently. So on on an infinite plane, for example, the glider will go on and on. Um on a on a Pac-Man world, if if the glider comes here and then it considers this as the next um if the, if the glider comes here and then uh, it considers this as its neighbor, the, the effects would be very different. Um, and then if it, it's again different if this side and this side are connected as well as this side and this side are connected. Um, yeah, uh, sorry if I've gone into a bit of topology. Mm. 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 Yes. I need to stop sounding like Lex Luthor. It's a bit creepy. I swear I'm not going to kill Superman. Okay, so we're going to store view in here. And we're going to copy into the view. Let's see if that produces an error. Yes.
this is temporary. I mean, what what view, the type of view is actually um, invalid type. Come on, eglot. So the type of view would actually be, right, a tensor.view, but right now we can concretize it. Do this. Yeah, so, okay. You see how it just, just these um, nine were, were were created and then the rest are all padding. Can you see that? Right, so these nine were copied and the rest are padding that, that is re re required. I will explain why the padding is required now because I'm trying to do something a little different from... Uh, from yeah, a, a little different from what you would do. So, so in in the normal case, you, if you have these coordinate systems, you can just go y minus one. If you want to look at the northeast, you just go y minus one, x minus one. Um, again, let me just show you in 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 a picture. So, so this is cell, uh, coordinate one one, right? And when you want to consider its neighbor, you just look, um, you just go through cell 00, zero 01, zero 02, zero and then you just iterate through its neighbors like that. Right? Um, you just iterate through neighbors like that. Um, and then you count how many cells were alive or dead. But because, um, because I'm using tensor.slice, I'm planning to use tensor.slice, I can just slice this whole thing out of it and do a sum minus one. Um, so I can sum this entire thing up, this entire matrix into one value. Let's say it's I, if the matrix, for example, is like that, one, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero. I can just sum it to one, two, three, four, and this will equals to four minus zero equals to four minus this one. Right, and it that's equals to four, uh, and that's a very quick and easy way to calculate whether something's alive or dead. So let's try that. Um, we might have to do some. We might have to do some optimizations in 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 the, the slicing bits, but yeah. Okay. The the copying works now. Let's slice it. for i range all right i equals to one i less than w dot world dot shape uh, zero Okay, less than w dot, w dot shape one shape plus plus. So now we can um, use b to do i j, and this is b i j would be the selected value, right? Um, okay, let, sorry. Going back to this um, table. Again, because we start with a three by three and then we pad outwards like this. So one, one would be this one. We start here and then you go up all to here and then you go up, down here. So one, one would be this, this, uh, this one. And then we, we, we select it. We select this slice and then you just sum the slice. Okay. Now let's go back to coding. So this would be the value itself. Um, and then I want a slice from this plus two, minus one plus two. Uh, 
i minus 1 to i plus 2 uh, plus 1. This is one of the slice. So you, you've got to slice twice. You've got slice row wise and slice it um, column wise. Um, and then the other one would be j minus 1 and j plus 1. Well, I'll have to clean this up later by wrapping these errors and giving it more. Um, but for now, I'm just going to print and see what I'm talking about. Um, I, J, value, value, and neighbor's date of life. Okay. Um, alive neighbors so that would be i j uh, the values itself would be w dot b i j and um c that would be some actually why 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 is it called c and just a all right um Let's see if this works. I mean, what's buff? All right, this new dot buff. So, yep, I equals to one, two, right. That would be w dot b dot shape and let's right. ah not b it's buff i should really get with a naming scheme there you go so what this does is it looks at ij11 which is zero zero there and the number of neighbors alive if if you we start with ij11 number of neighbors alive is um should be one why is this Aha. bug Zero, one, yes, one. And the number of neighbors would be this, which would be one. The sum of neighbors would be one. You know what? Let's look at the sum as well. Yeah, see, it's only looking at two at the same time. Aha. So I minus one is zero. Oops, shit, this is plus two. What am I doing? That's still not correct.
Okay, let's look at this first. Um, Jeremy says wrong rule. Okay, so this is the correct slice. Okay, so Jeremy says I'm using the wrong rule. I'm not actually using the wrong rule. I'm actually using this rule. This rule is the is the glider rule, and I've not actually, um, I've not actually implemented the rules yet. I've not actually checked against the rules yet. Hmm. What do you mean? I was trying to play a game of Half Life. Okay. Um. I'll take that as a comment for now. Let me just look at this and meditate on this. This is a convolution across a three by three convolution. Aha, what's this? I one J four. So I one zero one two three four. This should not be the case. Ah, yes. Okay. Jer Jeremy says I was in a wrong neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one second. I will need to check that out. Okay. So I was in the wrong neighborhood, but this is the one that, that bugs me quite a bit. So I won J4. And it returns the value of zero. It should not even go to I won J4. That's the thing. I1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's not correct. Why is it going to J4? So if I'm taking... Uh -huh. Ah, of course. I changed this, sh uh, okay. So this is five, five. This should be minus one. Am I right now? Yeah, so every, every consideration only considers nine cells exactly. Okay, now we have a sum. Ah, yes. Now let's consider this. What is the type of A? I bet you guys have never seen ah tensor.dense. Pretty now. I bet you guys have never seen um dynamic programming being done in actually no, let's let's query the shape of A. Uh, I'm 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 writing Go as if I'm writing Python. Um, you know, dynamic types and all that. What's the type of A? Oh, it's a, okay. For the shape of A is uh, okay. Good. So I can actually extract the value by saying data dot float sixty four, and that's what. Um, and that's actually the the sum. Now we can actually go into the rules. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, I'm just going to do this. And now I'm going to convert this into an int. There is a good reason why I'm converting this into an int because I'm going to check against the rules. Okay. So S is the sum. I'm going to check against the rules. Um,
Okay, I'm sorry. It's a, it's it's eleven o'clock, and I'm kind of spacing out a bit. Ah. <laughs> uh, so this is the rules. The rules. The rules. The rule is a byte. Okay, so you can just check whether a bit is set. That's fairly trivial. But there are eight bits, so. For I, B, zero, B, uh, yep, less than eight, B plus plus. This is so stupid. Um, sorry. Jeremy says, I don't have to finish it tonight, but I kind of want to. That's the thing, right? This is this whole thing is a uh, relaxation, right? Um, so, uh, rule. So, we, we're going to determine whether it, it survives or not, okay? Yep, we're going to determine whether it... Uh, no, sorry, if it's burst. If it, if it comes to life. So... Uh, what am I doing again? So, so this would be uh, will dot rule dot s. Yep. Uh, so this is a check whether it's set. Is set. If it's set and s equals to b, so this should be. Uh, then, then this is the this is the birth rule implementation. Then in the world, in the world itself, b dot w. Uh, nope. What's it called? What's the view in the world called? B dot a. Sorry, uh, world dot a, i minus one, j minus one, equals to one. Okay. And, and then we can just quit. We can just break. Because it's birth, right? Um, and then we can do the same. We can do the same loop, um, but for survival. And then everything else. So now this is the survival rule implementation. If it's set and the values, then it survives. If not survive, then we can do w dot a i minus one j minus one equals to zero. Okay. Now this is this seems to be a much much bigger program than I expected. So let's step through this and see what happens. Um. Okay. Let's not print this. Just print w. Right. Okay, when you step through, because there are only, oh, right, yeah, let's make this nine by nine. So this makes more sense, and we will have to set some basic rules. Ah, okay. So it's a very simple way to test, right? One three five seven is a very simple way to test. Um. Right, so let's just print this in full. Okay. 
Okay, so you've got one that survive. Uh, so there's one cell that's neighboring. So what you should expect is this to be one, this to be one, this to be one, this to be one, uh, this to be one. Uh, this to be one, no, this to be zero, this to be one, this to be one, this to be one, and this to be one. Oh, you know what, we can, we can do this with three, three, actually. And it would be quite easy to test with three, three. That's wrong. See? That's wrong. So, one of my implementations are not correct. Ah, of course. Position zero. Nine. That's still wrong. Okay, that's interesting. So, sum is this set. This is the bit set. Is the bit uh b b is set. So sum would be S, B is the bit set, and um, where it's set. That's that's a simple debugging that I do. You know, there's no there's no better debugging than just putting it into a log file. So. Ah, that's that's also log i and j. I and j and right there. Okay, and we'll just run this. Okay, looking at i and j equals to one one, the first bit is not set. Hmm. What? Am I crazy? Am I going crazy? Ah. Okay. Yeah, of course I'm going crazy. This is the other way around. I'm I'm thinking of this. So this is this is the first. Wait, why is it all not set? Ah, that's interesting. Okay, let's see what happens here. And seventy, yeah. One, two, three. Oops, three, four, five, six, seven. One, three, five, seven. Okay, I think this would be the correct one. Um, what? Okay, let's just pull this out. Bigger than zero. Oh, not one.
Um, three. Hang on. Oh, it's exactly the same. Okay. Oh, right. I didn't realize that, but it's exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Oh, there should be eight. Let's look at this. It's one seventy, one seventy. One, two, three, four, five, oops, five, six, seven, eight. There you go, it's not the same. I'm wrong. I'm very sure that um that no one's interested in watching some doofus just dicking around with bites. So for now. I'm just going to change this thing to a uh, slice of int. Okay, there you have it. We're going to change this. Uh, because, you know, bit shifting is a bit too much for 11 p.m. coding. So, 1, 3, 5, 7. 1, 3, 5, oops, 7. And let's not do this bit shifting nonsense. Okay. We can do this again. From scratch. For um birth in world dot dot b. Yep. If s equals to b, then w dot a i minus one j minus one equals to one and then break or if S equals to SS survives equals to true and break. At that range. True is not a type. What do you mean true is not a type? Number 981. Ah. There you go. Ah, still wrong. No, is it? Hang on. Okay. Sorry, this is not correct. Still not correct. Aha, aha. I'm using the buffer. Hang on, hang on. So, this should be zero. Why is it not zero? Does it survive? Okay, when you... Yep. Okay, let's just print the um, I, J, and S, okay? Yeah, I should have just put a new line here. I can't read that. So at any given rate, there is a sum of one. Ah, 
right? I have to minus the actual value of itself. So minus the recall recall that um in my in my explanation I have to re minus the value um of itself, which I did not do, and that's the cause of the bug. Now oh, that's trivial then, right? Yep, it's very trivial. W dot B oopsies. Wrong one, wrong wrong scene. I'm in the wrong I J ah, there you go ta da and there you have it now you have um you have um you have a game of life you can just step as much as you want okay so let's just put this in a loop right So 10 steps, let's see what these 10 steps do. What am I doing? Okay. Mm, you know what? I should put a new line here. Again, this basic stuff. Oh, one other thing I want to do is actually create a renderer, a simple command line renderer that deletes the line. Can I do that? Yeah, I can. I can do this. Um, so this clears the screen and then prints it. But then I would need um, time time dot sleep to actually see it happening, right? So once one frame a second, I guess that would be good. Uh, Emacs, why are you not clearing a frame? Yeah, okay, you can basically see um, uh, um, a game of life happening if you if the if this actually clears the bloody screen, but it doesn't bloody clear the screen. Why is it not doing that? Anyway, it should do that, but it's not. So that that is a bit annoying. Um, let me run this in a terminal and see whether it it's it looks correct. Uh, LL. Okay. See, you might have to do this. That's annoying. Um, I'll figure out how to clear the screen one day. Um, but yeah, this looks exactly like a glider. It's just not clearing the screen. It's just printing it down. I mean, I can I can put this into a picture. I can render this into a picture. I can render this on the terminal. Yeah. Yeah, this works. It's a game of life. What am I doing? There you go. Print the full thing. And let's not do this. We'll just print F and then put a new line. You can see the time steps happening. There you go. Print it full. 
Okay, let's watch the let's watch this thing by scrolling down. Okay. So you got this and this and this and this and it looks like some sort of game of life thing is happening, but it, it does look like it's gliding towards the bottom uh bottom right, which is what the glider is supposed to do. That's the rule one three five seven. Um, 1357, 1357 does. And you can, of course, change the rules. Um, you can do this. 1, 2, 2. Uh, there, there, there are, it, you don't even have to, like, you don't even have to, like, have 4. You can have 1. Uh, no, 4. So, I started with a single cell. A single cell on this side, on the top left, and then it glides downwards. So let's just put make this uh, full screen again. Um, and let's see what this rule does. It's a boring rule. It kills everything. Let's stick to the more interesting rules of 1357, shall we? Yeah, it's a very boring rule, sadly. So, you know what? Yes. Um, well, with a list of ints, you can now store it. You can do this. If there's one or two cells around it that is a, a live, still boring. Okay, let's let's let me look up Wikipedia and see what's a, what what interesting rules there are. What are oscillators? Okay. Hey, oscillators are pretty cool. Let's see what oscillators. Okay. Anyway, I want to see these in um. Oh, uh, let's do Conway's Game of Life, which is this. And and then we will have to set some initial conditions, right? So we need three neighbors that are alive. So CV one two one uh, CV one uh, two one one. There you go. Hey, Conway's Game of Life. I recognize this. I think. Nope, wrong one. So let's print this again. Let's not print the rule. I think that's correct. So you've got these. And so the next step... Whoa, what's that? Okay, there's some bugs here, but you can see a Game of Life thing going on. Okay, I think I'm going to call it a night, uh, but this is essentially a game of life-like thing. I'm going to probably restructure these into, into, into different parts of a library. Uh, there, I'm planning to work on something around this idea as, a, as, a art, as an art project. Um, yeah, and this is, this is basically... Look, you can you can you can very easily write a game of life without needing all these extra complexities like slices, uh, these tensor things. But I just wanted to see if I could do it within a tensor and and within the whole notion of matrix multiplication. In fact, if I can do a if if I can find a matrix multiplication that that does this, you know what? I might as well do that. But that might be uh, for future episodes. So. For now, I think um, that's it. Um, follow me on Twitter. Um, it's at C-H-E-W-X-Y. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got to say this. I am Dr. Frankenstein. And it's alive! There you go.
Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> All right, thank you guys uh, and girls, and oh, I uh, thank you, folks. Um, it's been having, it's been fun programming for the last uh, one and a half hours. I will see you soon on the next episode. Bye.